The morning light in my kitchen is absolutely fabulous. It's one of my favorite things, you know. Perks of waking up early and being ready to have my coffee when that morning light hits just right. So today, I'm gonna be taking you along and showing you what we eat in a day. I have been asked to do a video like this and I don't know why I haven't because this is like the easiest thing to do because we eat every day. And most days I am making our meals here at home. So a lot of times when I film breakfast, I'm filming a recipe that I'm really excited to share with you guys. Like it's something sweet, something delicious, but it's not what we you not like our go-to breakfast. Our go-to is very high in protein. So lots of eggs, lots of meat, some dairy in there, maybe some fruit, some yogurt, something like that. And that's what I'm doing this morning. So we are still in our homesteading drought. And to add insult to injury, not only do we not have our own eggs, meaning I, I did do a Costco run and you know I got the jumbo <laughs> containers of eggs, which is good. Uh, we don't have our own eggs. We don't have our own milk and we ran out of sausage. I can't believe it. I think this might be the first time in my, I don't know, lots of years with my husband <laughs> that we run out of sausage because he processes a lot of our meat. He always makes all of our sausage and he prides himself on that. And I tell you what, these growing kids, you know, they're really catching up with us. And I, I've shared this a lot lately because it's something we're working through and that is planning better working out our food storage situation. Um, so yeah, this morning I'm just using ground beef, which, uh, you know, first world problem. I actually love ground beef and I prefer beef to pork. That's just me. Don't tell my husband I said that. I don't know, maybe not bacon. I really like bacon and I actually really like sausage. He makes this smoked sausage that's really good. But anyway, back to breakfast this morning. Normally this would be sausage, but it's ground beef. This is at one pound of ground beef. Just gonna uh, brown this here. And this is a dozen eggs with maybe like a half cup of milk scrambled, poured that right into my beef. I did not drain my ground beef. Nothing wrong with a little fat. It's pretty lean beef anyway. We It's from our Jersey. Um, so good quality beef. Going to top this with cheese, let it melt, and work on a little something while the cheese melts until breakfast is ready. When I did my curriculum video for this school year, I told you guys about something new that I added in last year called Secret Stories. Um, I'm not partnered with them or anything. I'm just sharing because I genuinely love this. This was recommended to me actually by a local mom whose kids go to the little private school my kids used to go to and the kindergarten teacher there implemented this you know it's it's not really a standalone curriculum it's more of an aid or a supplement to whatever phonics and reading curriculum you're using but anyway the kindergarten teacher implemented secret stories and just had such great success with it so i'm like okay i'm gonna try this because i have had one child i have one child who had vision problems and this child is growing out of that we see a very conservative eye doctor who said that we should just wait rather than treat with corrective vision which i'm so grateful for anytime you can find a conservative provider that isn't like oh let's just treat it right away great that's good with me but this child really struggled with double vision and was let's see farsighted she the child had trouble seeing up close so it, it was such a struggle with reading and what I really loved about Secret Stories is it comes with these colorful cards and there's a little secret for every card. So for example, SH, this is a really easy one. SH goes shh and there's a little story, a secret story, that's why it's called Secret Stories, <laughs> that says that SH, when they're together, they spend most of their time at the library studying. It's just a cute little story that you tell to the kids and they remember them. Like the first time, they love these little secret stories. And so that's why SH goes shh when you see them together is because they're always at the library and they need to be quiet. So anyway, 
This was so helpful with my child that had vision problems. Honestly, it's going to be something that I stick with for all of my children. Like, I just couldn't believe how fast this child advanced in reading once adding this in, and it's just a really simple thing. So what I'm doing right now is cutting out some small little cards. So the pack that I bought comes with the bigger cards, and it comes with little smaller cards. So I'm gonna cut out these smaller ones for my youngest big kid who is starting basic spelling. I thought these would be really handy for him to have. Like I said, they're smaller, so I'll cut, I'll laminate the sheets, cut them out, and then he can have them by him when he's doing spelling and look for the sound that he wants to make. So this is something that I believe you have to purchase from the website. I don't think you can find it anywhere else, so I will link this in the description. Life update. Yes, the cat is still coming inside sometimes. She's officially our cat. I mean, it's been a few months that she's been at the farm. And it's just the perfect situation because she's so happy outside in the barns. But she loves to be inside too, and she's the sweetest thing ever. She causes us no trouble. So she sleeps outside at night. She goes outside a couple times during the day, and the kids go catch her and bring her in. And she spends lots of the day inside with us, and she's just brought a lot of joy to our our home she's just really funny and sweet and I like her I guess I'm a cat lady now I've always been a cat lady but I've shared that I have allergies and it's mostly short-haired cats I just can't <laughs> my eyes start watering I get short of breath it's really bad with short-haired cats and just short-haired animals in general however long-haired cats for whatever reason don't bother me as much okay so I'm just plating up our food John's this is a weekday John's at work so this is what I made for me and my four kids a dozen eggs a pound of ground beef some Greek yogurt topped with whatever fruit I have on hand a little bit of honey so <laughs> this is probably a more normal breakfast for us than what you guys see because I didn't make anything super special and fancy nothing baked and sourdough and delicious but this is a really good way to start the day with lots of protein so we're gonna go ahead and eat breakfast and this is when we do our bible study this is the bible i'm using right now i have lots of bibles uh i probably have a problem but i love this it's the didache bible and it has study notes which is really handy so after breakfast i'm gonna move it right along and get lunch going one thing that i've shared i really like to do is make a massive pot of some kind of soup or stew especially in the colder months and I do that like on on Monday and then we have it for the week for lunch and maybe you think well don't your kids get tired of that um no that's a first world problem that they don't have the option of complaining about they will eat what I serve and that is just what it is so I'm going to make sourdough chicken and dumplings I'm really excited to share this recipe with you guys. This is probably my favorite um, soup that I make, my kids' favorite soup that I make, and I start with a whole chicken. So I am preparing this chicken just like if I were, I'm going to roast it whole in a Dutch oven, just like if we were going to be eating a whole chicken, because I still want the meat to be flavorful and juicy and not dry. It actually does make a difference when you add the meat into your soup or whatever you're making. So this is how I roast a chicken. I start with some butter or oil, you know, olive oil or avocado oil, add in my seasonings, and I'll put the recipe in the description as always. Uh, mix that oil and seasoning mixture up, and then I pour lots of it inside of the skin, like in between the skin and the meat, um, top and bottom, and then I coat the outside as well put it in a Dutch oven and then I roast it at 400 in my oven for until it's done <laughs> it needs to be gosh what is chicken is it 165 something like that the in internal temp um, and I just do I check the temperature I eyeball a lot of things but meat is just one of those things it's such a bummer because it can look perfect and not be done on the inside um, so I just check the temperature. It takes about an hour for a, a large whole chicken. So while this chicken was roasting, that gave me an hour, which, you know, like I've said before, I edit my videos. You guys don't always see everything, but I was working. We got our school day started. So that is an hour of schoolwork. We got out of the way. And my poor little baby, 
he is just not feeling good. So we tr we've tried the carrier, we've tried everything. I've got to get lunch done. Like that's just not an option. I've got to get it done so the kids are helping me keep him occupied. He's playing with the cat, but he does not feel good. So I was going to show you what we eat in a day, but this is this video is going to actually stretch over two days now because good thing I'm making this massive batch of chicken dumplings. I think we're just going to have this for dinner too. That frees me up to cuddle with him the rest of the day. Like once I get this done, we'll eat it for lunch. I will hold him all day, sit with him all day. He'll feel better. We'll have it for dinner. I don't have to cook. And then tomorrow I will make for dinner what I was going to make today. Okay. So I had six big carrots and about six uh, stalks of celery. And I, when I'm making like a soup or something like that, I like to quarter my carrots and then dice them. So I have smaller pieces. That's just my personal preference. I don't like large chunks of vegetables in my soup. Um, I don't know <laughs> when I started preferring it that way. Maybe it's just from having kids. I found that they don't pick things out, you know, if they're in smaller pieces. But anyway, I've got an onion here and um, tragedy. I only had four cloves of garlic upstairs and I didn't want to run downstairs and grab more garlic. I usually keep my upstairs garlic bin stocked, but I need to go restock it. So I just used the four cloves I had, but I probably would have added like six at least if I had that up here. So I chopped all that, added it back to the same Dutch oven that I cooked the chicken in. And um, I'm just going to start letting that sweat on the stove on low while I, I've been letting my chicken cool here. Obviously you all know meat is very hard to handle when it's hot, so let it cool before you handle it. Uh, but I'm just picking the meat off the bones here. I'm going to use all the meat from this whole chicken. It's going to be about six cups of meat here. So I just kind of rough chop that. I did, I am adding a bag of frozen peas in with my veggies. Like I said, just letting all of that sweat. I'm going to add some butter in. You could have added the butter first. It doesn't really matter. Um, the moisture from the veggies it'll be fine you can just add it whenever <laughs> so I'm adding about a quarter cup of butter right now all the while I just have this simmering on low on my stove this is a six quart I think it's my six quart Dutch oven so it's pretty big this is a large batch here and I'm gonna start adding my seasonings I've got a half a half a teaspoon of pepper two teaspoons of salt a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and I think that's it. <laughs> I think I covered it all there. I like lots of flavor, and yes, I know I added onion and garlic, so maybe you think, why do I need to add the onion and garlic powder? Because I do, because it's extra, and it just, you just can't have too much flavor. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of flour. So this is going to thicken this soup up just a little bit, but it's still going to be a soup. It's still going to be a chicken and dumpling soup. If you want a really thick and creamy chicken and dumplings, double that. Add a half a cup. I'll put a note in the um, recipe. Now, I did stir that flour in and kind of let it cook down into the butter in the veggies for maybe five minutes before adding my bone broth. I added a total of two quarts, which is eight cups of bone broth. I actually had turkey bone broth left over, lots of it. So I use turkey, but you can use chicken broth. You can use turkey broth. I mean, you could even use beef broth. That'd be fine. Now I'm letting that come to a boil because I'm making my dumplings and surprise, surprise, I'm using my biscuit recipe. You guys have seen me use this biscuit recipe for dumplings before, but I, they were drop dumplings uh, that I, I made turkey and dumplings and did big drop dumplings. So it was almost like turkey and biscuits, but these I'm going to roll out and make actual little dumplings, cut out dumplings. My kids just love this. This is, this is like their favorite. And I am going to have all of these recipes, not only in the description, but up on my blog. So I'm so excited. Things are rolling right along. Recipes should start kind of going out around the same time on my blog as they do here in the video. And these are sourdough dumplings. So I started out, I just mod, this is my modified biscuit recipe to include sourdough starter. So it's like two and a half cups of flour, teaspoon, no, a tablespoon of sugar, um, four teaspoons or just a little over a tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, a half a cup of starter, a half a cup to a cup of starter, just whatever you have, one egg, 
and then about a half cup of milk. So the recipe will be everywhere for you guys. You know that in the description on the blog. Now you don't want to knead biscuit dough. Don't knead it um, because there's butter in there too and you don't want your butter to melt. I'm rolling this out to be about a quarter inch thick. That is what I want. And you can see um, that my soup is a boiling. So that's good because I want it boiling, like a rolling boil to drop my dumplings in and cook them. Um, using a pizza cutter to cut dumplings is just the way to go. It's just easy. <laughs> so I rolled it out into a square, about a quarter inch thick, cutting these out. They turned out perfect. And I'm gonna use only about half of these and then I'm gonna freeze the other half. So if you just wanted to make enough dumplings for this soup, then half the recipe, have, have, or half the recipe, have the recipe. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say here. Um, but these freeze so well and they're so handy to have frozen because then I, I can just pull them out of the freezer and throw them into any soup at any time and they cook up just great. So there you go. There's our, our um, sourdough chicken and dumplings in process. Still not finished yet. Got to add my chicken and let this continue cooking. So the dumplings will be in here for a total of 15 to 20 minutes. And they are so light and fluffy and buttery and biscuity. So I know, you know, a lot of people like noodle dumplings as opposed to biscuit dumplings. But some people are just wrong. And that's okay. It's okay to be wrong. I'm just kidding. It's okay if you like noodle dumplings. I will forgive you. But I love biscuit dumplings. I'm very biased. They're just easy to make. And like I said, they're just fluffy, buttery, all things good. So I'm going to freeze the leftover dumplings on this cookie sheet before I put them in a plastic bag and store them. Because if I put them in a bag and froze them, then they would stick together. But I kind of floured them or tossed them in some more flour. Going to freeze them that way so that they don't stick when I store them. By the way, um, if you do like, you know, hand kneading, hand rolling, you're always working with a floured surface, use your bench scraper to clean up if you're not already. It makes your life so much easier. I use my bench scraper, that, that one little tool, it's gotta be like under $10. It's such a cheap kitchen tool that I really do use all the time. All right, so my, you know, one thing I don't think that you saw me add to my chicken and dumplings for whatever reason, I guess I just didn't film it, was the cream and the cheese. So I did add one cup of heavy cream and two cups of cheddar, uh, white cheddar cheese. And let that kind of simmer for another five minutes. And this is just perfect. So like I said, this is soup. It's definitely soup. It's not really thin, watery soup, but it is definitely soup. If you want something thicker and creamier, definitely double that flour back when we added the flour in. So I'm plating this up, going to snap my pictures. I've got hungry children. We are going to be eating lunch. And then I am signing off from the camera today so I can go and just cuddle with my little guy. I still got to finish our homeschool day. So um, I'll probably say, okay, kids, just come to the living room. Everybody gather around. We have got a big, like really comfy ottoman. I'm going to sit in my recliner, hold the baby. You all get your books out and we're going to do school right here because baby doesn't feel good and he's fussy. And I've just gotten to the point in parenting when I just don't push it when they don't feel good. Having the chicken and dumplings made was definitely a blessing last night because I didn't get much done at all. He just wanted to be held and he's still not feeling good today. So I still have to feed the kids. <laughs> we can have chicken and dumplings again for lunch, but I need to make breakfast. So I just stuck with the classic, did my sourdough pancakes. That recipe will be linked in the description. I've made it several times here for you all. Now, one thing that I did get to today while the baby was napping was a little preliminary gift prep. I'm not actually doing my gift wrapping yet. I am just going through and making sure that I actually have everything that I ordered, that everyone has the same amount of gifts, just making sure that there are no problems. So I'm filming this three to four weeks before Christmas. I have plenty of time yet. If I notice that something I ordered hasn't arrived, 
or that I just ended up, you know, short one kid, then I still have time to replace items or return items or get additional gifts that I need. Another reason I do this preliminary prep is to save time when I actually do go to get my gift wrapping done. I'm just showing you some things that I've gotten my kids. They're very into belt buckles, pocket knives. That was the Leatherman that you saw earlier. All the boy things. Um, and I do have gift lists that are organized by age, like toddler, girl, boy, stocking stuffers, mom ideas. Those are all going to be linked in the description too. But doing this prep, I actually go through and I will get rid of unnecessary trash. That way on Christmas morning, when we're opening gifts, you know, it's just the gift. And anything that needs to be put together, I will put it together. It just cuts down on all the clutter and the kids can actually open up their gift, see what it is, and play with it. And then clothing. I am pretty confident about my kids' clothing sizes, so unless it's something that I'm just not sure about, I will take the tags off a toy snake. Uh, this is a stocking stuffer. Gotta love it. My boys love those. <laughs> anyway, I will take the tags off and wash the clothing. I'm actually setting it all, all the clothes in one pile to pre-wash. That way the kids can try it on and wear it. Um, I also got a new, this is not really a gift that's getting wrapped, but I did get a new nativity set because I've had the same one since I was a kid and the characters had several missing limbs, so it was just time. But anyway, um, I just like to do this prep step so that I'm not doing that last minute rush of like, oh no, you know, I can't find a gift or something's the wrong size. So I got this done today and was very relieved. Then all I really had to do since I had lunch made, we just had the chicken dumplings again, was make dinner. So this is what I was going to make yesterday when I was showing you what we eat in a day. So yesterday it was going to be the breakfast that I showed you, you know, eggs with meat, a little yogurt and fruit, chicken and dumplings for lunch. And then for dinner, I had planned meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and broccoli. Very simple, but something that everyone in my family likes. I know they will eat it. They will be happy about it. <laughs> so plans changed, but that's why it's always good to have something extra in the fridge, a big batch of something left over, or just something that you can go to quickly when someone's not feeling good, or just when your plans change. Anyway, so the meat was fine to sit another day. I'm making the meatloaf now. It's early in the day and I will have it done early. And then, you know, fussy baby, I can sit and cuddle him and hold him and just reheat all of this later. So my meatloaf, I have been making the same way for ever since I met my husband because I make it the way his grandma made it. However, right now, what you guys are seeing, I'm changing it up a little bit and using breadcrumbs. I had these sourdough breadcrumbs left over from, um, recently I made a bunch of breadcrumbs and I didn't use them all. So I'm using breadcrumbs in my meatloaf. That is really the only change that I'm making. And I'll give you a spoiler alert. It didn't turn out as good as my typical recipe. So I'm going to put my usual recipe in the description. And usually what I do is I don't use breadcrumbs. I use whole slices of bread. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't have to be sourdough, but it needs to be like a soft sandwich bread. You don't want like a hard artisan bread, just uh, six slices of bread. And yes, that's a lot of bread, <laughs> but it just makes um, the meatloaf so moist, you know, not dry, not compact. It's light and airy. But I found, and you'll see when I finish this meatloaf, I found that making it with breadcrumbs, it wasn't as light and airy. And my husband said the same thing. He said, it's really good. The flavor is just as good, but I like it better when you make it with the other way that you make it. <laughs> so anyway, I always make my meatloaf in a cast iron skillet because that's the way that John's grandma made it. And it's just really, really good. Um, oh, you know, another thing I did different this time was the sauce. I usually, this is totally like a, you know, grandma recipe, but I usually mix ketchup, 
and mustard and brown sugar and that's my sauce and it's like a real it's like a sticky sauce and it's really really good but I wanted to try something different today so I just did um like a marinara sauce with brown sugar that also was not quite as good so I did you guys will see I baked this meatloaf and there was nothing wrong with it don't get me wrong it was actually really good but we're used to extra good extra really good meatloaf um you guys will see when I take pictures it looks really good but I just like it the original way so I'll make it for you guys sometime the way I always make it but I'll put my original meatloaf recipe in the description now what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find room for all the groceries that I have sitting on the counter they've been sitting on the counter for like a week my mom and I made a Costco run and we are just bursting at the seams here as far as food storage goes this is a problem and you know I knew when we moved into the house that I didn't want our kitchen to have like a walk-in pantry because I didn't want our kitchen to be like the bulk food storage area. I always wanted a cold room in the basement. It's just taken us this long to get to it, but we are getting to it this winter. It is on the project list. It is going to happen. We are framing up a food storage cold room in the basement. John said it's going to be after the holidays. So you guys will probably see videos come out like showing that process mid-January. At least I hope we start <laughs> then. But we will have so much more space because I need it for right now. I do have food in the basement, but it's like a dungeon down there and it's all just sitting there. It's not organized. Ugh, it gives me anxiety, but he's going to build me shelving. He just told me, you know, draw up what I want and he will build it. So I cannot wait for this. I'm so, so excited. But for now, you know, I just had to cram things in wherever I could fit them. All right, so I went ahead and took pictures of this meatloaf because I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I didn't know if it would be just as good with the breadcrumbs. Turns out, like I said, it wasn't, so I'm not going to put this on my blog. I'm not going to put these pictures on my blog, um, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and continue finishing my meal and like I said, I'll have to make this again, which I make meatloaf all the time, so that's fine. Next time I make it, I will make it the normal way and take new pictures. Those will go on my blog because I do want to put my meatloaf recipe on there. So you saw me pull down some quart jars of potatoes that I canned from the garden, and I'm going to use those to make mashed potatoes. They are Yukon Gold potatoes. And I didn't peel them before I canned them, so they still have the skins on. And yes, I am a little bit sick right now, so it's just been going through our house. As you saw, the baby not feeling good, me not feeling good, that's why my voice sounds like this. I'm also making some cheesy broccoli, um, so it's just like a couple tablespoons of butter, some frozen broccoli, you could use fresh, that'd be fine too. Um, some cream and shredded cheddar cheese. Simmer that on low and it's cheesy broccoli. It's very easy. And no, I don't always make my veggies cheesy. But my husband likes it when I do. So I do a lot. Anyway, I just went ahead and re... Those potatoes that I canned, they were already cooked because they get cooked in the canning process. So I just reheated those so they're hot enough to mash really well. And if I would have used a bigger Dutch oven, I could have just done it all in one pot. But I wasn't thinking put them in a small Dutch oven so I, I need to use this big mixing bowl to mash these all up. I added, let's see, uh, four tablespoons of butter, two ounces of cream cheese, a half cup of cream, two teaspoons of salt, half teaspoon of pepper, and that's it. And mashed them up. And just delicious, very rich mashed potatoes. And I'm just going to cut my meatloaf here, plate this up, make it look pretty, take some pictures and be done. I'm done cooking for the day. I'm going to go tend to my sick baby and I will see you all next week.